Okay. Okay, well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to a new Reader's Warehouse Recommends. I'm Thomas from Reader's Warehouse, and you might have seen that this is, um, for the next few couple of weeks, we are doing um, pre-recorded sessions while we're away between December and January. And during these sessions, we are highlighting big titles coming out in the first half of 2023. 2024, sorry. So you can get the heads up of books that are coming out that are maybe from some of your favorite authors or books you didn't know about that maybe would be of interest that you would like to read um, in the new year. Um, what, uh, joining me today is Elmarie Stewart from John the Wall Publishers. She is the sales manager for the Hash Publishing Group and we publish books from around the world, specifically in the UK and USA. Um, Elmarie is in charge of Big, big, big authors. Um, some of the big authors that she brings into South Africa are like Karen Rose, Robert Gelderbrath, um, Laura Roberts, Nicholas Fox, John Grisham, Stephen King, Michael Connolly, and uh, many more. Um, she was also involved um, in 2023 with the huge um, book talk runaway success, uh, Rebecca Yaris's um, Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. Um, very recently, uh, she bought it out in 2022, but its sales have skyrocketed in 2023 um, was the late passing of Matthew Perry and his biography, um, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible um, Thing. Um, what I didn't tell Almery was this video is actually going up on the 1st of January, Monday the 1st of January, so Happy New Year to everyone watching this. Um, Happy New Year. Um, thank you so much for watching this, and if you're watching this after New Year's, um, welcome to this video. Um, Almri, what I thought of maybe just asking you first was, were there any standouts of 2023? Uh, what would you think, what do you remember the, of the books, the books you handled in 2023? Is there anything that stands out for you that you remember um, that year in the book industry? Uh, morning, Thomas, and morning, morning, everybody. Thank you so much for the opportunity to chat to you about books, which we all love doing. Yes, I think, as you mentioned, Rebecca Yaros has just been the most incredible um, surprise and success. Um, who knew that dragon riders could could become such a big thing? I was certainly caught off guard, like like most of the the publishing community. So that it's been really wonderful uh, to work on that and to see the. The hype and the demand for me it was very reminiscent of when the first harry potter book sort of started gaining traction and it was that kind of frenzy and excitement and enthusiasm that we've seen from readers around the world which is really wonderful um in an ever increasing digital space it's so wonderful to see people running literally running to bookstores to go and buy physical books to buy hardcover books beautiful special editions that that's sort of becoming um a highlight again something that we didn't really see previously in our market because pricing is always a challenge uh, so that's definitely been but there's been so many highlights you know book talk continues to um deliver some wonderful authors that were previously lesser known or maybe not discovered so they're bringing them to a whole group of readers and on a personal level i'm a big dion mayer fan so i was so happy to see that his afrikaans novel leo finally finally saw the light and that means we'll be lucky enough to have the English translation available for Christmas next year so unfortunately a bit of a wait but if you're lucky enough to to be able to read and understand Afrikaans then um, I think that's probably definitely on people's uh, wish lists wish list for Christmas so yeah I mean there's there's almost too many as you as you mentioned we've got a wonderful list of big name authors that we look um, after but also along with that we've got uh, we had wonderful debut authors that came through this year as well, um, that uh, introduced um, readers to sort of new writers, new books, new genres also coming out. Yeah. So how it's going to work is Armin is going to share a presentation with us now for some titles coming out um, for the next six months. Um, where she's put prices in, we'll have those titles um, listed on our website for pre-order. So you can add them to your wish list or add a, a pre-order the title on our website and then the titles that she hasn't yet been able to get pricing too far ahead um, we will um, list them in the future on our website so you can take it down the details and also just to know that it's publishing and it's forward planning some titles might move out slightly so something might be a March title might move out to later this year but we'll definitely inform you if any of the pre-orders slightly change so Elmarie over to you for your presentation. Thank you very much uh, let me let me see if I can get this um, done correctly. As I said, I'm not, the, you know, don't usually work on uh, Zoom. So let me know if you can see everything fine on your end. Yep, we can see it. Great. Okay. So then, um, as Thomas mentioned, I look after the Achette division, which is just a grouping of different publishers in from the UK and the US. Uh, one of the 
uh, genres that I've mentioned already is that Book Talk has been an incredible success. And so the the first couple of titles I just wanted to flag to you um, are some, some Book Talk titles coming out in the first part of the year. So in January, so just around the corner or by the time you're watching this already available in bookstores, hopefully is a series from Elizabeth O'Rourke. She's an American writer that also recently really blew up all over TikTok. Um, and she's got a series of books called loosely called the summer series. These are all standalone books, so you don't have to read them in a particular order. They all have different main characters, sort of different tropes and genres that they deal with and address. Uh, our we the covers that you see on the screen these are the UK covers so the US uh, usually does different covers they tend to go for more photographic covers we go for the more slightly um, book club if I can call it that look in our market so the summer we fell is the first book then summer I saved you book two and the summer you found me book three but as I said they are standalone so you can actually read them in any order and uh, needless to say most of the recurring themes in these books are tragedy heartbreak but then also a healthy dose of lust <laughs> mm -hmm. which I think is what some book talk titles have become known for and then um Flagging for February, hopefully in time for Valentine's Day, we've got a new Ali Hazelwood. She's definitely become sort of a superstar on our list. I think she is one of the biggest selling book talk writers around the world at the moment. Really launched the, the genre called Steminism. So women in science, technology, and engineering and mathematics. Smart women, um, but still a, a you know, sort of healthy dose of, dose of romance. In Bride, she decides to turn her hand to paranormal romance, uh, something a little bit different for her. And she, the two main characters are a werewolf and um, a vampire. And the two of them have to form a very unlikely sort of allegiance to keep both, both families, both parties existence secured. And reluctantly, they are married off to one another. And of course, as, as is inevitably the case, that sparks will fly. So something slightly different from her. Um, and then later in the year, we've heard that there may be another book dropping in from her, which is great for the Hazelwood fans that normally don't want to wait too long for her next book. And then Anna Huang has also been just the most wonderful um, success story in our market. In fact, I just looked at the latest Nielsen figures again, which, which measures fiction and non-fiction sales in South Africa. And her Twisted series is still consistently in the top 30. And then, of course, she's got this uh, the Kings of Sin series. So King of Sloth is book four in the series. Obviously, she's making her way through the seven deadly sins. And King of Sloth will be coming out in May. So they always reveal the cover a little bit closer to the time. So just to note, this is not obviously the final cover, but it will have a very similar um, design as the previous three titles in the series. Yeah. And then after that, there's still Envy, Gluttony, and Lust to follow. So these will be spaced out roughly about seven, eight months um, in between each book. So though, and there's obviously many, many more book title, uh, book talk titles coming out. There's there's on average about seven or eight titles a month that drop in. Um, so this is just a very brief snapshot of some of the biggest titles coming through in the next couple of months. Yeah, you know, I have to say that the series themselves so 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 that was the the people our, our customers are buying it all the time. I think that was the series is just you know it just has surprised me how well that's just sold like constantly you know all the time. Um, this yeah, that it, the series. it's it's very you know it's it's quite uh, interesting and a challenge to manage stock to make sure you never run out obviously of these books but you know at some point you think okay but surely everybody has now bought and read it so you can start ordering maybe fewer and then you just see it it's just unbelievable the momentum so and i think they've said that there's another series of her that's not currently available in our market yet but they've bought the rights the uk publisher little brown bought the rights to a new series as well, which will also come out sometime in 2024. So if you are an Anna Huang fan, there will be many books to keep you busy next year, which is good news. Then on to fiction. Uh, Sarah Steele um, has sort of become known for, for specializing in historical fiction. Her previous book was called The Lost Song of Paris, did incredibly well in our market too. And we've seen a real interest and appetite for sort of books 
based on facts um, with the Second World War as, as a backdrop and, and predominantly focusing on the role that women played during the various battles and resistances and struggles. So this one specifically focused on the women um, who uh, fought dear, uh, in the Italian resistance. And it's a dual time frame story. So it starts off in Naples in 1942 uh, and features a woman by the name of uh, Luisa Giordano, who's who's had a, a terrible heartbreak. She's lost her baby. Um, the man that she was in love with was, was tragically killed. Um, wasn't her husband. She finds out, in, in fact, her husband is actually colluding with the Nazis. And then the story moves to the golden age of Hollywood in the in the 60s uh, and introduces you to a, a rising up and coming Hollywood actress who is from Italy, but she is the latest big star. And she gets offered a role to portray um, a character that featured during the Second World War and fought in the Italian resistance. So she travels back home to Naples to do research for the role. And then, of course, uncovers um, all these sort of secrets and stories that have never really been made public before. So, um, as I said, we've seen a wonderful um, sort of search and interest for these kinds of titles. We've had quite a few authors coming through, publishing very successful in the genre. So it's nice to start off what's traditionally a quiet part of the year with some really nice uh, book club fiction coming out. And then I have to say, this is one of my favorite titles. I know you mustn't have favorites, but it's really hard not to be charmed by this book, The Excitements. Um, it's it's the story of two sisters in their 90s, Penny and Josephine Williamson. They are absolutely British national treasures. They um, were also involved during the war. They um, served in the Women's Royal Navy when it was still kept a separate um, unit and are pretty much revered by the British public. Um, they do the sort of morning talk show um, routes where they appear on talk shows and the media. They're the darlings of the media. Everybody just loves them, but nobody knows that they actually also live these double lives as spies. I think Penny was a code breaker and Josephine is actually qualified in hand-to-hand in -hand combat. So the two of them were actually spies during the war. And so they are invited to go to Paris, where they are going to be honored for their role in, in winning the war. And they discover that they, there's some jewelry that have appeared after many, many years that was stolen or disappeared during, during the war. And the two sisters decide that they are going to steal these jewels back and deliver it back to their rightful owners. But now, you know, 97 and 95, I think, respectively, are their ages. Um, and they've got their long-suffering cousin, Archie, who is sort of their minder, who has to try and keep control of the situation. So it's a wonderful, um, charming as it says, the uplifting, cozy mystery. If you love Richard Osman's books, The Thursday Murder Club, or those kinds of titles, then I think um, then I think you will absolutely love it. I kind of, as I started reading some of it, pictured sort of Miriam Margot Lees and Maggie Smith. You know, if they had to do a movie, the two of them. So it's that kind of two madcap older ladies. And um, the, 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 the tagline for the book is wonderful. It says, revenge is a dish best served old. So <laughs> it's... Um, underestimate these ladies at your own peril it's just a wonderful fun book to get stuck into and this will be available in february mm -hmm. then if you really enjoy twisty thrillers don't want to see the end coming then this is a book that there's a lot of hype about at the moment and it's called first lie wins this is the adult debut by ashley alston she's previously done some young adult novels but she's not really written anything in the adult fiction uh, sphere before and this is the story of a woman who uh, works as a spy. She gets, uh, she works for, uh, she doesn't know the person that she works for. She just knows him as Mr. Smith. She doesn't know who he is or who he represents. All she knows is that he gives her an assignment. He gives her her identity and he tells her where she's going to be based. And then obviously who the target is. Uh, and usually it means she has to eliminate this person. So the book starts off with where she is now firmly entrenched in a new cover story. Her name's Evie Porter. She lives in this very sort of um, quiet town and she is dating this man. Uh, and the book, the, the opening scenes are sort of at a party where they are mingling with other guests. And a woman walks into the room and walks up to her, and uh, she is a girlfriend of one of the, the the friends of this man that she's dating. 
but she introduces herself to Evie using Evie's actual real name, something that nobody is supposed to know. Nobody knows Evie's real identity, and yet this woman introduces herself as Evie's real identity. Um, and clearly, there is now there's now a conflict here because this lady is also not who she says she is. And so what happens then is this real twist and turn sort of uh, fast paced read of trying to figure out, you know, what exactly is going on here. And is Evie, despite being a spy, is she actually, you know, a bad person? And to make matters equally complicated, of course, she also then develops feelings for this man that she's meant to be taking out. So um, it's a very difficult book to present because it's too easy to give away um, something that may ruin the plot line or the story. So I feel this is something where people are just going to have to pick it up when they see it in store, maybe read a few pages um, and decide for themselves. But there's a great amount of hype around the world. And I think the television rights have already been sold. So they are busy developing this into a television series as well for next year. Yeah, I was going to say with these sort of books, these are also really great for book clubs because once you've read it, you want everyone else to read it so you can talk about it. You know, so you Absolutely. Know, you, and even you... better if you can read it at the same time. So you can yeah, constantly yeah. be chatting to each other. So, oh my goodness, did you just yeah. see what happened here? Yeah, or like, uh, and then like pass it on to a friend and then, or your parent or someone to read it as with your mom and be like, this, you know, I need to talk to you about this book. You know, uh, this yes, is... but also you don't want to give away anything. So you don't yeah. want to, um, it's very difficult to to chat to somebody about it who hasn't read any of it because it's too easy to give away. Yeah. And you don't have to wait long for the book to start um, sort of twisting and turning. It will, it will sort of make you gasp in the first 10, 15 pages already. So um, a really great fast-paced read. So I can highly recommend that. Okay. Then on to the next title. Um, just want to see. It looks like my screen is frozen for some reason. Yeah, it looks like your book is moving. Um, is it? Okay, there we go. Yeah. yeah. I'm a very big fan of David Nichols. Um, some of your viewers and readers may remember a book that was published in 2009, which sort of launched his career called One Day. And it just became an unbelievable bestseller. It was turned into a film starring Anne Hathaway. And in fact, Netflix has again bought the rights and they've actually also developed it into a limited part series, which will start screening next year on Netflix, I think around February. So they've done sort of a recast and they've redone um, redone it as a series instead of a film. So again, there's not coming in May next year, there's not a lot of information available on the book yet. We haven't received the manuscript, but he is the master of writing just beautiful, beautiful love stories. Um, not always necessarily with a happy ending. Sometimes it can be really bittersweet, but in this book, he sort of looks at, at new chances in life, um, and the two main characters meet each other quite coincidentally when both of them are in very difficult phases of their life um, and end up uh, sort of undergoing a journey together and uh, then developing a relationship between the two of them. So um, I'm a very big fan of David Nichols, so it's very hard for me to be objective. I will really read anything that he writes. His writing is beautiful. So I'm very eagerly awaiting the manuscript that should hopefully be in... Um, in the next couple of weeks. And then once that's out, it usually means they can release some more details that we can hopefully then make available to you to put on your website as well, Thomas. Yeah, well, amazing. And then from something sweet and hopeful and uplifting to something completely the opposite, you know, the master of, of dark, twisty and scaring the living daylights out of you, uh, Stephen King, who is as prolific as ever. He is 76 years old. He is not slowing down, which is just incredible. At the moment, we've got his latest book out called Holly, which is doing incredibly well. And uh, this is a really nice treat for us because this is a drop-in title for the middle of the year. He normally publishes his full-length novel around September, October. But this is coming in June, and it's a collection of um, short stories and novellas. So these, most of them have never been published before. The book is almost 500 pages, so it's a nice, nice, chunky read. Um, I think sometimes that short stories, novellas are a little bit underrated, that people don't quite appreciate how much punch they can pack in just a few pages. And um, he doesn't disappoint when it comes to delving into sort of the darker side of things. Um, so, yeah, if you are a 
a, a Stephen King fan, and I think this is something to put on your on your wish list. One of the stories is called Rattlesnake, which is the follow up to Cujo. So if you ever saw or read Cujo and wondered what could have happened potentially afterwards, well, then he has written a story to sort of address all of that. Uh, so that is that is the Stephen King title, and that pretty much wraps up uh, some of the big fiction titles. And then just two nonfiction titles I wanted to flag. Never in my life did I think I would willingly pick a book on, on cars or Formula One, but this is just a really fascinating biography on the life of Enzo Ferrari. I know nothing about Formula One or cars. I know, obviously, some of the big names, but um, I've really... Um, the more I've read about this man's life, I've, I've really become sort of a little bit obsessed with with his story. He was by no means a an easy man to work for and work with and be around, but he he really built up um, this most incredible career and and contribution that he's made to the industry over the last you know sadly he passed away about 30, 40 years ago. Now he died in the late eighties, I think, but. Um, he made an enormous contribution, not just to to Formula One and, and driving, but to just the design of cars and the industry as a whole. But with that, obviously, it wasn't an easy path. He was a bit of a Lothario. He, um, he had numerous mistresses, so he was not faithful to his wife. He had a terrible obsession with some of his driver's girlfriends, which is a little bit disturbing. Um, but he, um, he came from sort of being unknown, launched himself as a racing car driver in 1919, and then eventually went on to win uh, major Grand Prix titles before he decided he wanted to build his own cars and start his own company. And and so basically the legendary Ferrari um, automotive brand was, was born. There's been a lot of interest recently because there's been um, films that have come out and I think next year as well, it's possibly already available. There's a series on Apple TV uh, starring Adam Driver, which is based on the life of Enzo Ferrari. So this book sort of formed the basis for the television series. The book was uh, published back in 2016 in Italian, and it's now been translated into English. The author, Luca Del Monte, actually worked for Ferrari as an employee for many years. And so he's had unique sort of insider insight into how the company was run. The many challenges they faced and like I said Enzo Ferrari was by no means a choir boy he was at times an extraordinarily difficult unpleasant person to work for and be around but he did build up an, an absolute empire so um yeah like I said I'm the most unlikely person to want to read a book like this but I think it, it's absolutely fascinating um and if you're struggling to buy a book for Father's Day it will be in time well it's coming out in March next year actually but for Father's Day for the men in your life or the or the boys um this could be a really nice read to get them into books and then the, the other nonfiction title is Around the World in 80 Years with Sir Ranulph Fiennes, who is just the most incredible, inspiring man. He is holding the Guinness World Records for the uh, world's greatest living explorer. He was the first man to travel to the North and the South Pole. And he, at the age of 65, he climbed Mount Everest. So, I mean, uh, if ever you want to feel slightly uh, inadequate about your hobbies at home or not getting off the couch, <laughs> then maybe this book will be the inspiration you need. So this is a collection of um, his writing from, from his many previous books. We've got a wonderful connection in Cape Town with him that he actually spent uh, part of his childhood in Cape Town. They lived in Newlands. Um, he went to school in Newlands, and I think at the age of 12, they then moved uh, back to the UK. So he's just an incredibly inspiring character. And again, so a wonderful um, collection of writing for people who are interested in um, not just travel and adventure, but just, you know, great, great biographies and autobiographies. And, and that's my selection. So, yeah, I hope there's something in there for just about everybody. Thanks so much, Almery. Yeah, I was going to say what I did see actually, I think this week or last week, there was a trailer from Apple TV about the Ferrari with Adam Driver. So I think it is coming oh, out right. very soon. So it is out. It looked yeah. very, very good. So, um, but uh, I think that, you know, there's been a few um, Ferrari like books about different um, car drivers that have sold really, really nicely. So I think, um, I think that book, like you said, it's per perfect for Father's Day or um, if your dad or uncle is having a birthday coming up, you know, after the book is published, it's a great title to um, to think of, you know, as a, as a present for someone. 
Yeah. No, I think so too. So um, we, the Max Verstappen book at the moment is doing incredibly well. It's called yeah. Unstoppable. And again, it's just amazing to see. Um, and so, yeah, that's just a very small selection of what's coming out. I think there's many more titles. And so hopefully you are not sitting feeling too gloomy about the kick of the new year. Maybe you've uh, put a few rands aside under your pillow so you can go buy some books. Um, we certainly will have a range of books available to keep you wonderfully entertained for the first part of the year. Thank you. Wonderful. And as I mentioned, um, all titles that we can put on pre-order on our website will be listing in the comments below. So you're welcome to have a look. And then um, if there's any title changes in publication dates, we will um, definitely inform you. So thank you so much for watching. Elmarie, thank you so much for your time and sharing those amazing titles with us. Some really um, nice broad range. There's something for everybody there. And, um, and if your New Year's resolution is to read more books, um, you've just got some nice um, choices over here. Now. So um, Thank you so much, Omri. Thank you, everyone. No, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity. And have a happy 2024, everybody. May it be a wonderful year. Grateful. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. We'll be back next week, uh, Monday, with another one of these sessions for another two more weeks. So we'll see you then on Monday at 12 o'clock. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, where's my stop?